It's an honor to be able to speak to you guys across the pond. Um, it's not often we get a chance to work together, or spread ideas uh, freely, especially uh, given the last year's worth of world events. Uh, it's made things a lot harder to try and um, have these types of uh, shared informational sessions. So I really appreciate you guys taking the time to put together a, a web conference that um, uh, includes information from around the world. My name is Stephen Reisner. Uh, I am an aquaponic consultant. Uh, I also um, do a whole lot of other things. I put a lot of uh, educational material and information out into the world. Uh, I have a, a podcast that I host um, every week over in the United States, uh, putting out information on living soil and in uh, uh, aquaponics and, and other topics as well. Um, but today uh, we're going to talk ab um, about flowering crops in aquaponics and uh, how to use dual root zones, um, aquaponic uh, planting methods to maximize uh, fruiting crop production. I've previously worked both in aquaculture on the uh, ornamental fish side and tropical fish side, as well as the um, uh, fish production side for, for food fish and a whole bunch of other projects in between. Uh, I previously worked at a, a large aquaponics company uh, in the United States and then started for the last five, uh, five years doing consulting for, for people around the world uh, in, in both North America, Europe, and Africa. I have not had a chance to, to get uh, involved in any projects in Asia, but, but hope to in the future. Um, today we're going to talk about dual root zone planting. So, um, uh, you know, it's a method to dramatically increase production of plants and um, uh, reduce um, some of the costs uh, that might be associated with um, trying to maintain some of these additional nutrient levels uh, on, a, on a bigger scale. Um, while uh, maximizing production on a per crop basis. So we can individually feed um, each plant differently or each crop differently uh, to maximize production. We can feed older plants differently than younger plants and all different types of things like that. Uh, it also allows us to further boost uh, flavor profiles uh, and, and gain some of the benefits of some of the wonderful soil science, which I'm sure many of you have uh, um, uh, been exposed to. I know China is, is one of the leaders in, um, in soil science. So today we're going to talk about combining some of the advancements in soil science with some of the advancements in aquaponics and how that can be utilized to uh, maximize and have a lot more control over production uh, of your flowering crops than you otherwise would. This is actually an elderberry tree here. And then these are black crim tomatoes. Uh, and these are some koi in an aquaponic system here. So this is the general um, <clears throat> um, methodology that we're going to talk about today. Uh, this is the method called dual root zone planting. And as you can see here, we have the soil layer above where we have our living soil. We have our burlap layer in between that uh, helps with the uh, uh, separating the soil to make sure the soil doesn't go down into the lower media layer. And we don't want that to happen because we don't want the water to wick back up into the soil. We want there to be a, an air gap. This way we can top water separately in the upper portion and then still have our media below. Now what this will do is it will allow the water to flood and drain and act like a diaphragm, pushing the air up through the soil and then back down in a respiratory me uh, methodology. So this uh, accelerates gas exchange in the root zone and dramatically accelerates growth rate, but also allows you access to terrestrial microbes and mycorrhizal fungi and a whole zone 
that can be supplemented either through soil amendments and time release um, healthy soils or through direct fertilization of the top portion of the soil. Here we have uh, the, the media below and then we use a basket bottom pot as well ideally or just put some extra holes in your pot um, to help the water flow through easier. It's very important that the water line is not too high up into the soil. If you are, make sure you, you adjust your standpipes and cut them shorter uh, or, you know, otherwise adjust the height of the, of the bed or raise, you know, put a little bit more media below it and just raise the, the height of the pot. Both, both ways will work. So here's an example of two tomato plants. Uh, the top plant here was in a media bed only. This is a tomato plant. Uh, the bottom plant here was in a dual root zone. As you can tell, it's a pretty uh, night and day difference in plant size. It's quite dramatic. And, um, you know, I, I think the picture kind of speaks for itself and, and how much different it changes the root system. Um, this plant had 44% more flowering sites and 38% more f total tomatoes in the time that we grew it before harvest. So, you know, a huge, huge increase in production. So the basis of aquaponics dual root zone planting is using, uh, the, filling the pots, the top half of media with soil. Uh, separated by a layer of burlap. This allows you to have two separate zones that can be controlled and adjusted independently. Um, this also allows you to have terrestrial microbes and aquatic microbes available to you and your plant roots and your root system. Um, you know, it, it, so the reason why that helps is, is that the different microbes in the soil will activate different parts of the plant's immune system. And how that translates into benefits to you is that it allows you to get more flavor compounds and better disease resistance and an overall healthier plant. And we do this in a wide variety of crops, everything from stuff for cosmetics to med medicinal plants to um, uh, flowering crops. Uh, this makes a huge difference. And in particularly if you're going to try and grow trees, and aquaponics. They really need to have at least 50 to 75 percent of their root zone as soil. Um, trees in particular do much better with a 60 to 70 percent soil mix, uh, roots of their soil instead of 50-50. And we'll see some demonstrations of that here. So this first picture is a picture of some cucumbers. These are sour gherkins. And these were planted in dual root zone um, plants in a commercial farm just off to the side they plant this on the side you can see the very last row up against the wall there this way they're not blocking light from their other uh, other plants and you can also see they put a layer of calcium around the base of it there in order to protect from slugs So dual root zones, are, it's super important if you're going to succeed in being able to maximize the production of fruiting crops. It allows you to have uh, the additional uh, uh, inputs, the extra uh, microbes, and the ability to have uh, a lot more control. Again, we can make time-release nutrients. We can make... Um, um, different compost teas and ferments from you know the natural farming world and we get the benefit of, of the mycorrhizal fungi that are so beneficial to things that are woodier uh, particularly lignin heavy crops so uh, bushes trees uh, anything like that the woodier the crop the more it's going to rely on those mycorrhizal fungi to really 
um, have the best possible growth. Uh, a lot of trees and a lot of specialty crops really have a hard time growing without um, their associated uh, beneficial fungi. Wasabi, uh, Osho root, um, some of these more specialty crops uh, can be easily grown in aquaponics um, because you can, in, in a dual root zone type setup where you can have that mycorrhizal fungi and they can still have that, that fast grow method from the fish water and the, the respiration rate. You can also adapt it to dual root, uh, uh, DWC systems, deep water culture as well, as seen here in the lower right. Also eliminates the need uh, to, to do any type of decal built systems. Uh, you know, you can adjust each of the nutrients on a per crop basis, even on a per plant basis. Um, it allows you to maximize production of your crops. In a single grow run or grow season, you can um, try 12 different types of, of supplementation and immediately, uh, you know, that second time that you're running that crop, know exactly what the, the maximum production is going to be. So. It allows you to, to much more rapidly uh, adapt and, and, and push production numbers on, on new crops uh, and be able to adapt to anything. The other advantage is, is that if I want to grow something like, let's say for example, blueberries, okay, or some other crop that wants a very low pH, um, you know, this method allows you to uh, grow in those super low pHs uh, without having uh, to affect the fish at all. You know, you can run a, a pH of 5.8 or 8 in your soil, uh, or all the way up to, you know, even higher, up to 8, if you wanted to run a, something that's really high pH, and then still have your normal fish, fish water there. Right. So this would allow you to grow all different types of things that maybe you you know would have a hard time growing in aquaponics because of the pH problem. Uh, again, generally it's an associative uh, endophyte that needs that um, in the root system uh, or some other portion of the plant um, that needs to have a particular pH. So um, by having the the you know majority of the roots or at least half of the roots in there. Uh, that allows the plant to house those facu facultative microbes and endophytes that um, help that plant survive uh, and, and can allow you to grow crops that you know to traditionally or you're told aren't possible in aquaponics or certainly aren't possible in in hydroponics so um, it allows you to expand the types of crops that you thought previously you could grow in aquaponics here's a large pumpkin you can see here we have a, a quite the large um, pumpkin. This is growing in California. Um, this is a quite the large pumpkin plant, but again, just growing in a dual root zone pot all the way up there in the back. And then running the vines out across the floor. So and here's what it looked like to start off with. Again, just goes to show you can do all different types of crops that traditionally, again, you're, you're told you can't do uh, in aquaponics. So again, without aquaponics, it's a lot harder to dial in your plants. It's a lot higher, harder to dial in your, um, uh, uh, you know, just maximizing yields. Uh, you know, you can get 35, 40% more very easily by doing some light supplementation into your root zone uh, in the upper portion. Uh, just a little bit of light potassium or a little bit of light um, whatever else it needs and, and the plant will just really excel and it also gives you a place to grow you know mushrooms and, and all kinds of other cool stuff that traditionally uh, uh, also fit the same kind of you know eco business model um, for, for people that are selling aquaponic crops um, and uh, you know we're always looking for ways to diversify our crops and this again you could repot your plants up put put a couple of holes like you do here you can see we got mushrooms popping all across the bottom of this here big giant plant stock growing there uh, and um, and again another comparison of the roots this is two different plants there but you can see uh, quite a bit of a difference there on the root comparison <laughs> in the media bed and then this is the the dual root zone uh, tomato 
And then here's again is another uh, dual root zone DWC plant. And again, allows you to maximize on a pull crop basis. If I want to have um, peppers and tomatoes and um, beans and what else would you grow long, long term? A vining squash and uh, and maybe some herbs, some flowering herbs like lavender. Okay, we can supplement all of those individually and maximize their production without impacting them or the fish health. And when you get to commercial production, that can be a huge, huge uh, benefit. Now, here's an example I just did in my backyard. This is just a 4x2 mixing tray. I was living in Colorado. And we just put a couple of little one-gallon pots in for the, the peppers and the tomatoes. And you can see, even though there's only four goldfish in this, and all these plants... The plant, you know, this thing's growing like gangbusters, and it's it's off of a a twenty gallon ro uh, plastic container. But we supplement the plants here uh, individually, so they have um, soil in the top of this where we can fertilize it a little bit extra above it, and provide those terrestrial microbes. And you can see the plants are super healthy, covered in peppers. All right, the five controls of dual roots and aquaponics. Dual roots and aquaponics allows the dosing of nutrients directly into the water. And this would be for things like iron, calcium, trace elements, micronutrients. That's really good. That's the best place for that. And then also for, for pH adjustments. You know, you're going to have to maintain your pH over time as the pH goes down and um, you know you're going to alternate between potassium silicate and calcium carbonate to um, you know get the best um, the best management on your pH and then uh, if you're dosing uh, into your soil you know you can use any compost teas your ferments any of your cream natural farming inputs um, you know and, and a wide range of stuff any pretty much anything you, you want to as long as you don't dose you know too much of it now how you determine how much to dose into this is that you're going to take one of these pots and fill it up the same way it is here uh, and then you're going to take this and sit it up on the edge of a table or um, on a on a rack or some kind of screen uh, and then you're going to pour slowly pour a measured amount of water into the pot now once you start to see water drip out you know that's your saturation rate so what you'll do is take that volume, so let's just say for example, it was um, 16 ounces. You're going to reduce that amount in half to eight ounces um, before you, you do it. So if it was actually, I'm sorry, we're presenting to China. Um, if it was one liter, uh, we would reduce it to 500 milliliters uh, to um, reduce the volume uh, for how much to water. Now, we can then amend that 500 milliliters with whatever we want to for, for a top adjustment. You can even go up to 600 milliliters if you thought it was a little bit overly dry. Um, but generally, as long as you're watering it uh, twice a week or so, depending on the size of the plant, three times a week if it's large, um, you don't really have too much of a problem. I mean, you can fully automate all the watering and everything. It's not really too much of, a, much of an issue. And there's a couple of different ways to do that that... Um, that we, we we won't get into in this presentation, but uh, but yes, you can use pretty much any traditional drip method or whoever you feel comfortable with. Custom soil mixes. Uh, a lot of people also have um, uh, hybridized soil mixes. Um, you know, there's all different types of, of famous soil mixes out there, and um, whatever you have that works good for you is, is good. But what you really need for a uh, dual root zone aquaponics is you want to have something that's quite a bit of aeration you know you have to let the air through has to breathe and if it can't breathe it, you're not going to get that that gas exchange and you're not going to get all the proper benefits of the um, dual root zone aquaponics so definitely something to think about and then it also allows you to foliar spray nutrients if you're going to go that route 
um, mainly for things like kelp and stuff like that. Uh, and then allows you, uh, or chitinase, uh, microbes type um, uh, things. And then uh, also for um, uh, allows for various fish foods. So if you're feeding much more protein heavy fish feeds or more carnivorous plants, uh, or, I'm sorry, carnivorous fish, um, uh, uh, you're going to end up with a lot more nitrogen uh, in your output and it's going to be less beneficial to flowering plants uh, than if you have it in for vegetative plants. So if you're, um, if you're growing a lot more flowering type crops, you're going to want to lean more towards more herbivores or omnivores uh, as your general food fish you're trying to optimize on a large, large scale. Uh, whereas if you're on a smaller scale, um, uh, you, know, uh, you can get away with a lot fewer fish uh, that are carnivorous to feed the same number of plants because they will put out, um, you know, carnivorous fish with a higher protein in will have a much higher uh, nitrogen output than uh, a herbivores would. So, for the same biomass of fish. So, uh, that's, that's one of the things that's important. Uh, again, and you can change that up quite a bit as well to, to you know, further change your, your mineral levels, but uh, that's a whole separate science that uh, takes a lot longer than we have time for today. So here's an example of a dual root zone cabbage. You can see there's a, a standard testing bottle there. Uh, and then a dual root zone uh, lemon tree. You can see how loaded this lemon tree is with flowers. Um, this is set up in a dual root zone type setup with a, be um, a flood and drain kit on a timer uh, that is built into the barrel itself. Uh, proper watering. Again, we talked about measuring the whole amount of uh, the soil. Uh, and then dividing that water amount in half to get your um, uh, uh, total volume for, for supplementation. And then you're also going to add your, in your upper part of your soil zone, you, know, you, can, you can add any type of microbial inoculant. So any type of mycorrhizal inputs or you know, whatever it is that you like for, for proper microbial inputs. Nematodes, beneficial nematodes is another great way um, uh, to uh, help defend your plants long term for very low cost and something else that can also be added to those soil zones and give you another layer of protection for pests in your grow. Um, again, remember to use pots with lots of holes. Uh, make sure you have lots of media on top of your soil. You can see here's some cloth bags. Dosing your nutrients, you can pour it directly into the water like we said. Mix it to chlorinator and spray it foliarly. Uh, you can pour it in the upper part of the root zone, or you can diversify your fish feed. And here's an example of some dual root zone tomatoes. So aquaponics uses an average about 18% of the water. Um, it's one of your highest costs after uh, water is about, you know, can be quite expensive depending on where you are in the world. A lot of places don't have enough water. Uh, and um, it's good for island nations and desert areas. Um, again, places that don't have a ton of water in their water table. Um, and then um, uh, the water allows for you to have you know, quite a bit of additional diversity. We've noticed that certain uh, endophytes in the water really signal certain terpenes and, and flavonoids in certain cr crops. So it really is uh, kind of something that needs to be further researched quite, ex you know, quite a bit more. And again, we talked about before dosing fish safe nutrients into the water. Here's an example of a uh, watermelon from germination. So the soil layer provides a terrestrial zone for mycorrhizal fungi and all your terrestrial um, microbes, your beneficial insects, uh, you know, that can defend against things like thrips and root aphids and root mites, um, gives them a place to live, uh, and um, your mycorrhizal fungal networks um, terrestrial microbes, supplemental soil mixtures, uh, all the uh, pro all the beneficial protists and top water, you know, all the different things that that live in that living soil zone that that benefit the plant and activate its immune system and really help boost. Damn it! Well, this whole slide's fucked. I'm gonna redo this. One.
So the soil part of the, the biome uh, has your mycorrhizal fungi, your terrestrial bacteria, um, your beneficial nematodes, um, and, you know, it gives you a place for your rove beetles to live, and all the stuff that's going to help protect your plant and stimulate its immune system uh, to help give it the best flavor and the best defenses so that you don't have to spend as much on secondary uh, uh, controls. Also gives you a zone to, to add your top water nutrients uh, or any type of supplemental things, be it organic or otherwise. Kind of adds like a sponge for those roots to kind of have access to that. Here's an elderberry tree that we're growing in, in Oregon. We've also done grapes and all different types of crops. Did moringa trees, peach trees, apple trees, pear trees. And here's those tomatoes that we looked at earlier, the roots. As you can see, the one with soil is quite a bit larger. With quite a few more flowering sites. So you can see here the, the you know, really good anthocyanin expression you can get to when the nutrients are dialed in. All right, thanks for joining me. Um, here's my YouTube, uh, my podcast, email, if you have questions, and my website. Appreciate it.